we got the animal skin. The hair off, the hair is singed. You can see the animal is clean. Remember, the meat is going on your plate. So take your time. Make sure the animal is clean. The first thing Ryan's going to do is take the tip off. Now, you've all heard of a tip roast in the grocery store. Ryan's going to show you how to do this. Now, watch what he does here. See up here? There's a knuckle in there, and there's a joint. Slice on that side of it, on the joint, that side of it. Now it's open. This is really like a kneecap. Now, if you don't, Ryan knows where to go. See this line right here? This line is what you want to follow. Then you come out on a, almost like a 45 degree angle, and that'll pull your tip. Now watch what Ron does. He's going to put his knife in there. See how he's pulling down? He's going to run that bone, hugs the bone, push back on that bone, and slice down. Watch how he comes out. 45. Perfect tip. Now you want to know how it's a perfect tip? See that? Right down that line. Can't, it doesn't matter here, but if you're in the grocery business, it's a big thing because it's a profit thing. So a tip to get more money out of it. But also, if you're going to do your animal, do it right. Okay, he's going to pull the, the other side of the tip. Same thing. He's going to grab. This definitely helps. If you don't have one, be careful of your fingers. But see how he's pulling pressure on there. He's got that uh, kneecap open. Now watch him. He's going to follow that line right on straight down. And when he's doing that, he's putting pressure back on that femur bone. He rides that back down. Perfect tip pull. See that? No meat left on that bone. You lost no tip here because he came right to that edge where that line is. Perfectly done. Now what Ron's going to do is pull these flanks. Now if we were in the business of the meat, these flanks would be good. We do not bother with them. Most of the time it's your blood shot and there's not really enough meat there to bother with. So what you do, pull that out of there, get it out of your way. He pulls it off of there. Next thing Ron's going to do is pull these inner tenderloins. Now I'll tell you this. First, personally, it needs to be done in the woods. You can see um, it, they start drying out. These guys hunted late last night, didn't have a time to do it. Normally these guys do, just a little tired and anxious to get home. I don't blame them. But you can see if you pull them right away, you won't end up with this dark meat here. And there's nothing wrong with it. We're going to take and cut it off. But all it is is just dried out from the air. But watch more how Ron pulls these out. You can see there's a vertebrae. See where he put his knife. All he does is run it straight down. See how he opens that up? Hits it. It'll peel right on out. And he goes all the way up in there and grabs every bit he can. See that? Brian's going to pull the other side. But I just want to show you how, you know, it's pretty easy. We know where it is. But you can see that bone. On the other side is one tenderloin. This side is another. If Just put your finger there. You can feel it. But go ahead, Ron. Pull that one. Runs his knife straight down there. Goes up in there a little bit because it does run up in there into the sirloin part of it. And all he does is follow that bone. There is a bone there that you can follow. You're not going to mess up any meat by uh, doing it. And there you have it. Perfectly pulled tenderloin. We'll show you that too once we get it all trimmed up. The next thing Ron's going to do is take this neck off. Now this neck, you won't get a neck like this on every deer. You can tell rut is starting by all means. The neck is swelled on this. But it's a nice sized deer. Perfectly for a neck roast. Um, a lot of guys don't like them, but I'll take that out, bone it out, throw that thing in the crock pot. It's absolutely delicious. Okay, Ron's going to pull off the front shoulders. Once again, you can see a seam here. Go ahead, Ryan. He's going to follow that up, up a little higher, and then he's going to grab. Stop right there. Let him see. Now, see that shoulder blade? Come up there, and you can see it pull away. That is the shoulder blade. Now, he's going to follow. What you don't want to do, and he didn't do, is you don't want to dig in here because this is going to be part of your back strap. He did it. There's a seam there. Just follow that seam. Continue like we do, like skinning. Just pull away, and it'll come right out of there for you. Okay, we're going to do the same thing on the other shoulder. You can see where I'm talking about. You can see this flap. If you run your finger right up in there, cut there, that shoulder will fall right out. See what he's doing there? Got that pulled away. Once again, stay away from that back strap on that back. See 
So he stayed away. That's all back backstrap meat here, this silver part. Basically what we have left right here is the rib section. We're going to take a saw here. Once again, a lot of people have and like them. Personally, I do not like the ribs. So all I do is come across here and just square it up. Again, I should have my hook, but I wasn't prepared for that. All right. Now he's going to show you where to break it. This is basically just to get it onto the table so it's easier to process. At the end of the tenderloins, we call that the loin section, he's going to knife it right there. Now this one up here is going to be a little more difficult. The loin section, you can see once again, where this comes down, you're going to want to take the knife and go straight across. Once you do that, if you feel bone, just drop down just a little bit because what you are is you're into the sirloin bone. So Ryan's going to take a knife and knife it there, perfectly hit it. There. Then we're going to take a knife, huh, a knife, we're going to take the saw, we're going to break this down. All you're doing is cutting the backbone right there, put it on the bench, and we'll go from there. Let's process it. The same thing here. Just taking the backbone, it's already been knifed. What you have left is your two hind corners down. This is a little bit harder, but what you want to try to do, you really need a hook on this. Take this right in the middle here, and we split it. Hindquarters. All right, as you can see, we've got the animal broken down. These are your two front shoulders. Okay, we showed you how to take that off the animal. This is the neck roast we were talking about, and excellent roast. I really recommend. Uh, I like bone on my mouth uh, myself. Roll it, makes a great roast. These are your tip roasts. We'll talk again more about that as we go. This is your two back straps that I was talking to you about, and this is the loin strap. This, the loin piece. This is also back strap, and this is. What is this here is going into more of your chuck section. Once we start boning this out, we'll talk more about that. But both of these is where your back straps do come from. Right here is the two inside tenderloins, which came from, if you remember, when deer was hanging from the underneath inside, which we said would probably be best if you pulled them in the field right away. That way you don't lose any meat. Absolutely great, great piece of meat. Once we've seen all this now, we're going to go and show you the hindquarters.